Hickok 45 here. It's another good day I get to shoot an AK. Maybe two of them if I want to. Probably just one. They're about the same thing, so uh, shooting one is like shooting them both. Except one has a cute little attachment, right? Yeah, it's AK day. It's Chinese AK day. It's uh, AKS 762 day. That's what both of these are. Pre-band Chinese AKs. All right. And again, don't get a bad taste in your mouth, at least regarding the quality of these AKs. Uh, these are some of the best made. Who knew? You know, and, and a lot of people did not until recent years, I guess. Or probably a lot of people knew back even in the 80s when they were coming into this country. It's just that, uh, you know, we have that, that idea, and sometimes legitimate, that anything made in, where's that place? China. Is uh, junk. Because, you know, a lot of junk is made there. And uh, these were made, though, uh, with some quality control, apparently. Okay? So, you've not seen this spiker. This is my Polytech AKS 762 spiker. See that? That's a spiker bayonet. Okay? <laughs> it's attached. It's like a Russian SKS. Well, or a, uh, a Type 56 uh SKS from China. You know, they called the uh, their AK the type. This is a Type 56, of course, and they called the, S, the SKS the same thing. So it was confusing. They both came along at the same time. So uh, 56, you know, and uh, so let's don't worry about names, right? It's a Type 56. So is that, you know. So, it's, but anyway, uh, I have not had this, and no, this is not the Select Fire. You know, many of you who really closely follow realize I have something like this that might be Select Fire. This one, and you'll see it before too long, okay? But I didn't want to ignore this baby. Uh, I mean, this is what most of us have. It's what I've always had. It's just great rifles, believe it or not. And uh, they don't have to be Select Fire. And this one is really quality. It, uh, and it, I mean, it's almost like, it is like new. And uh, I actually bought it kind of thinking as a parts gun in a lot of ways. And uh, for my other baby that you'll be seeing for too long, you may have already seen it. But you know when you see this video, right? But uh, just so you know, I do have a select fire uh, version that we'll talk about at, at length at some point, And maybe you already have. Maybe you've already seen it. Because I don't really follow you individually and know what order you watch videos. <laughs> so, but this is uh, the Type 56. And it's semi-automatic. It's uh, pre-band. Meaning pre-band 89. The 89 band, not the Clinton band. Not you know, A lot of people that don't <laughs> have it on well, fortunately, maybe, but you didn't live through all those bands and all those crazy things. Uh, you think, and you're more aware of the, the Clinton ban, the crime bill, as they called it, right? 94, you know, to 2004. No, this is the, the ban in 89. It was, uh, a lot of people blame Bush and, you know, uh, the older Bush, because it was during his administration, and it's kind of typical of whoever the president is gets blamed for everything, right? And uh, I... To tell you the truth, I don't remember all the details of how that came. I do know what precipitated or what the uh, catalyst was, was the shooting in Stock, uh, Stockton, California. But, uh, but you know, I, I don't remember the, the composition of Congress at the time, the Senate, I, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff and what, what, it, what they were up against, who proposed what, to tell you the truth. But anyway, in 89, uh, that's when the import ban came about on, on, on things like this. And uh, I'm going to shoot it if that lets out. So do you mind if I shoot this? Will it still shoot with the uh, bayonet opened up like that? I don't know. You want to try it? We'll see if it does. What the heck? <laughs> I, I've only fired this one. I don't know. I think I fired it to make sure it works. And uh, took a couple of shots to, to figure out the sights here just a minute ago. And uh, they were too high. The rear sight was too high. So I have to hold about 6 o'clock with this baby. Let's, uh, let's just load it. Take a couple shots. You want to? See if it's sighted in for that 2 liter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about that red square plate over there? To hold uh, the bottom of it. Nice. How about an orange 2 liter? 
the red one. And a bowling pin right here. Man, I, oh, we haven't smoked a pot yet, so let's do that. See if we have ammo for that. Yeah, get some smoking done there. What you tell anybody I missed that two liter right there? Put a couple on this target. Mm, all right. Feels good. About a swinging bowling pin. And another one. How about the... Uh, I think there's a little cinder on that barrel over there. Can't see too well over there. Okay, that was shooting a little bit too high. All right. Let's just put one on the gong. Let's don't. <laughs> he didn't want to hit the gong. Okay. Again, with an AK, they rarely, you know, uh, hold the, the bolt back, of course. All right. So, so you got to get all the bad guys before you're empty, before you get close to being empty. So, uh, Yep, AK, uh, nice, nice firearm. Any of you maybe have not fired one ever. Uh, it's your loss. You're missing out on some fun. This little cartridge is, uh, it's a blast to, to fire. It's fairly comfortable to fire. You know, there's some brass, some fusion. You got different types of it available. Uh, it's, it's just a nice, nice round to fire. 30 caliber, it's got some punch. But it's not 308, 30 out six, not that kind of punch, of course. Uh, intermediate, you know, cartridge. And uh, before I get too far, I want to thank also SilenceForCentral.com, really strong supporter of the channel, and uh, be a great place to buy a suppressor, to shop for a suppressor, to figure out what you want. They'll help you through it, walk you through it, and then when the paperwork is approved, actually not a lot of paper, quote unquote, involved anymore, right? But they'll help you through that and uh, send it to your door. They have reps in every state, so appreciate their support. Uh, speaking of this ammo, and uh, I'm going to go into maybe some more things and stuff. We get our uh, the select fire version out like this, but I'll talk about a couple of things. Shoot this a little bit. I wanted you to make aware because uh, these things, in their own right, even though I have kind of a <laughs> you know an upgraded version of this, uh, this this is quite a nice rifle. It really is. Uh, and uh, that ammo reminded me that uh, some of you can't relate maybe. Back in the 70s, uh, when again, advantage, I have a little more uh, scope of perspective maybe. It, it's hard for you maybe to imagine, but in the 70s, I was collecting guns, buying guns, shooting, going to the range all the time and shooting and uh, trading guns and everything. And no one of those days that I, I, I'm pretty sure of well, maybe not 100% sure. Could I have gone into a gun shop around Nashville area, Middle Tennessee, and just picked up some uh, 7.6 Super 39, a box of this, uh, steel case, brass case, or anything. Not only that, I, I didn't even see one of these rounds. I was always uh, interested in them because I'd heard about them, read about the round, but nobody had one. No gun shop, nobody. Uh, nobody had an AK that I knew. They, they just weren't around back then I, I, at all, almost. I think the, the Valmets came in early and then the Maudis later and then, the, you know, the Chinese in the 80s. But, you know, it just really was not a part of my experience. I've told you before somewhere in a video, I can't remember where it was, about how the uh, ARs were available. You'd see them rarely, uh, the civilian, you know, semi-automatic version in a gun shop. Really rarely, though, in, in the 70s. and. I didn't know anybody had them. I got one 83, four. But AKs just didn't even see them. Okay, just really, really uh, rare, like a unicorn almost in the 70s. And then, and then they became a little more available, you know, in the 80s, you'd see one every now and then. But again, nobody had them hardly. So it wasn't even a topic of discussion. Uh, there weren't articles written on them a lot. And you know how it is with a firearm, you know, it's just all the buzz, well, plus no internet. And so, so that's why one reason there might be things like that going on. Maybe, I don't know, maybe in Atlanta, there were there was a gun shop where 
people were selling they happened to have, and that was their specialty. They had to go to great ends, great lengths to get uh, an AK and keep one in stock in the 70, 1975. But, you know, I was not aware of it. I don't know. You know again, no internet. But uh, they just weren't out there. And, and then later on, of course, as they came in and these were available, you know, I, I, I think even the Chinese versions at that time, I, had, I bought a, a 5.56 version. It had the thumb hole stock. And that was in the 80s, mid uh, to later mid 80s. And then I bought one like this that was 7.62. It may be, sad thing is it may have been the same gun. It did not have the spiker bayonet on it, but it may have been the same gun and I couldn't even appreciate the quality and I probably paid 400 bucks or something for it in 80, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it was. I might be able to look that up and get a closer date, I don't know. I remember I still had that though when John was young and because I put, the reason I remember is that I, you know, I had trouble with this short stock, Warsaw stocks, of course. That's what turned me against them early on. I finally got rid of it. I had socks taped to it and all kinds of things, trying to get that stock long enough for me. And, uh, and I didn't know what I had. I mean, it was probably the same gun, worth thousands now, and I just didn't fully appreciate it. I finally traded it off. And, uh, but because the Chinese AKs have a really good reputation, okay? People who know AKs, they, they just do. And uh, I don't need to take it apart, I guess. But, uh, but just the machining, you've seen these. John's done uh, his, like the, this is the Galil folder. I just brought it out. It's the same gun with a different folder. And just the machining and the internals, they're just really uh, high quality. And uh, anybody that, that knows AKs will, will tell you that. You know, this one's dirty now, of course, but they're just nice. Double hook, you know, hammer and everything. Uh, sweet, 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 sweet shooters. And uh, I, I really enjoy these. I just, I just do. And uh, don't shoot these a lot. I should shoot them more. They're so collectible, I'm a little hesitant to, to wear them out. Well, that'd take a lot, though, wouldn't it? What did I just say? Wear out an AK? Did I actually say that? <laughs> But uh, let's shoot it. I'll yak a little more. Yeah, it does shoot with the bayonet out, doesn't it? You know what we got to do uh, before I get too late here? I'm not going to too long with this. I just want to make sure you saw this uh, beautiful spiker, semi-auto spiker. It's uh, you got safe and fire. Uh, you know, got the Chinese mag, uh, and this one's actually in, in really, really uh, nice shape. And one advantage to this one over the other one, it's got a folding stock. But, nah, this one's really uh, got the advantage because look what I can do. You could deer hunt with this thing and, you know, if you ran out of ammo, look what you could do. I'm going to go ahead and put it in matter. Yeah, let's get ready because we don't know what's going to happen here. We could do a stab. Uh, should I pull the trigger? Uh, I was going to. Maybe I shouldn't think about it and just do it. I'm going to put my head down, make sure I'm aimed correctly. <laughs> okay, I didn't get too big a shower. <laughs> Not too big a shower. All right, let's blow that stuff off of it. Nice. Hmm. Feels good. Hey, burn barrel, you need a bullet. safety on and of course uh, you may have seen John these bump stock uh, or bump stock they uh, bump fire really really easily and, uh, and I'm not really into that not good at it but they uh, they they just because they have such a nice trigger very nice trigger they are uh, again this thing's all stock because it's pre banned and uh, has a Chinese trigger just like the other one and it's, it's as good as any trigger I've ever felt on an AK or better than most. Just really nice, light, crisp, got a clean break. Uh, they're both that way. Uh, so, and, and totally stock except for this. I put that on, of course. I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why I wanted to add length to it. And again, because it is pre-banned, that's it's good and it's bad. It's why it's so expensive. These things are really high. Even though it's just semi-automatic, 
Uh, but you don't have to worry about being compliant with having a certain number of U.S. parts and all that sort of thing because they are literally pre-banned prior to that 89 ban. And uh, they weren't cut up and shipped over here like so many have been and done, and even the arsenals and others. Uh, and then someone over here has to put them back together, whether it's a Romanian uh, AK or an arsenal AK, whatever it is, and rebuild it. Uh, but to get it into the country, it's got to you know, be configured in a different way and, and all that. And so none of that you know, was done with this. This is original Polytech, just like that one made in the 80s at factory 386 i guess both of them were i think if we can that's a that indicates the factory 386 where it was made again polytech and Orenco, they're basically just conglomerates uh, importers exporters or whatever uh, they themselves as i understand don't build the firearms uh, they work with the factories that that do all that kind of thing so uh, pretty cool and the spiker i'll go into more of that in the other oh later video but but uh, this may look familiar to you if you've seen Vietnam footage or I got one better than that. It might look familiar to you if, if uh, somebody was shooting at you with one in Vietnam, <laughs> in that Vietnam footage. You were in that Vietnam footage. You were over there, right? I was not, as you all know. But uh, this is, gosh, these Chinese uh, Type 56 AKs were exported all over the world. And... Uh, North Vietnam, especially many of them, and uh, so they they show up all over the place. Uh, they uh, like the Iran Iraq war. I think Iran and Iraq bought bought them from. So it's the same rifle on both sides. Uh, just need I say more? If you know anything about AKs, you know they've just dominated the world, of course, for a long, long, long time. And uh, and they really they've changed some, of course, through the years, but. Uh, not not dramatically you got of course the AKM uh, and there, there's so many things you can talk about with these are uh, the early uh, uh, receivers you know were milled and then later uh, sheet metal so to speak you know whether it's the Russian ones or the Chinese but now the Chinese uh, used a thicker metal uh, a 1.5 1.6 millimeter versus most of the other AKs including the Russian AKs were one millimeter in thickness and so so these are actually heavier duty and not only are they well made, better made than most, it's a heavier metal in them. Uh, so, which is one reason they didn't rib the, uh, the cover here. It's just thicker metal. That, that ribbing was for strength. It adds strength. You know? So I'll see you a couple more rounds. I uh, not any more lies. I can tell you about it. But this is the distinctive Spiker model you know, with that bayonet. It's really a nice bayonet. Uh, I joke about it, but I, I've, I've always liked the the spiker type attached bayonet on this the sks and the you know the chinese the russian sks they just work so well clear right yeah the way that swings around the way it hooks it uh it's simple ingenious uh design a lot of ways and it falls back out of the way and uh seems to do do really well so let me put another mag where is some of that uh uh, da -da -da. Let me try. I don't remember if this one likes the uh, brass case. I thought I had one out here. Uh, I guess I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Let me Let's, oh, if it's in this gun. Let me put that in here as a prop. Yeah, here we go. Some fusion in that one. We'll see how this one does with it. Take a couple more shots. Uh, I got a thing about this thing to tell you about. that. Uh, yeah, just uh, if you're interested in AKs and you're shopping for one, there's a very common question on the internet in general. I know on our channel it is, uh, what's a good AK for the money? What's the best AK? Just what's the best AK to buy? And as I've told you before, uh, I've never really known. Everybody has an opinion. You got compatibility issues and just uh, manufacturing quality and all those sorts of things. Uh, price. And I just took the easy way out long ago and bought an arsenal. Because everybody kind of knows they're, they're really nice AKs. They're not cheap, but they're nice AKs. You can't go wrong with them, probably. So I took the easy way out. Now, all these others, it, it just comes down to what you're looking for. And I would say if price were equal, if these are some of the very best AKs. These Chinese uh, AKS 762s, you know, are some of the very best AKs. Problem is... 
uh, in a pre-band configuration like this, they're thousands of dollars. They're more expensive by far than an arsenal generally, you know, so that's what you run into. Maybe just get an AR. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? I like them both. These are heavier, but uh, they're just they're just neat. You could say they're iconic, right? <laughs> yeah, let's see how this feeds. Sweet. Mm. Nice. What else needs to be shot? How about that ammo can lid right there? <laughs> well, doesn't it? I mean, that is one of the, maybe it was considered by many to be the most uh, recognizable firearm on planet Earth. Yeah. And it might be right. You know, you could show somebody a picture of this that knows nothing about firearms, right? It hates firearms. Maybe it's seven years old and never been around firearms, and they, they might recognize that as, a, as what it is, AK, right? And uh, it's even on, what, the flag of Mozambique, I guess? And I believe it's the Spiker model like this. Let's put that out. Yeah, that's cool. And that's one of the attractions I had to this. Uh, it's, they're just well-made. They're really cool. They, uh, the, the spiker is, is a, a, you got an iconic uh, rifle to begin with, and that spiker model just, just really adds to it, that bayonet. Uh, it's a, quite a jewel. If I were going to war tomorrow, maybe I would take this. I don't know. I can't, I can't guarantee that. But anyway, this is a Polytech AKS 762 pre-band. A lot of these were made in the 80s. I talked about it. John's talked about it. A lot of people have. Uh, and then, of course, when the bands came, you know, in, in 89, they put a halt to it. And it's a shame that, boy, it couldn't have gone for eight or ten more years uh, importing these, these fine AKs. Because it's just as they're really coming into the country, these high-quality AKs, you know, got uh, the whammy put on them. And then there were so many restrictions after that. Uh, but, you know, there's still lots of AKs out there. Thankfully, because uh, I agree with Ice Cube, it's a, no, he's just the opposite. I have an opposite, uh, uh, contrary philosophy. To me, it's a great day when you get to shoot an AK. They're wonderful. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here, also uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.